Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to try to find the area underneath a single arch of a cycloid. Now, the equations describing the cycloid are here. Y is equal to R times 1 minus the cosine of T, and X equals R times T minus the sine of T. T, of course, is the parametric variable. To do that, we need a small area element, and we're call, going to call that dA, which is equal to the height y times the width dx, which means y is already defined in terms of t, but dx now needs to be defined, so we're going to take the derivative of x with respect to the parametric variable t. So to do that, we go dx dt is equal to r times the derivative of t is 1 minus the derivative of the sine is the cosine of t. Now we move the tt over here, so we have dx is equal to r times 1 minus the cosine of t times dt. And now we plug that in here for dA, so we have dA is equal to y, which is r times 1 minus the cosine of t times dx, which is equal to r times 1 minus the cosine of t times dt. Now, the reason why we need that dA is because we're going to integrate. The area is going to be equal to the integral of all the dA's, and we're going to integrate from the origin to where it meets the x-axis right here. But notice that we cannot use the limits in terms of the x variable. We need to use the limits in terms of the parametric variable t, which represents the angle of the rotation of a circle, which means we're going to integrate from 0 to 2 pi. And so now, we need to plug this into our integral right here. Before we do that, let's go ahead and simplify it a little bit more. We can say that dA is equal to r squared times 1 minus 2 cosine of t plus the cosine of t squared times dt. Now, if we're going to plug that into our integral right here, we have a little problem. We have a cosine square of t. So we can use a, an identity there. We can write that dA is equal to r squared times 1 minus 2 times the cosine of t plus 1 half times 1 plus the cosine of 2t. And then the whole thing multiplied times dt. Now we're ready to go ahead and plug that in here. Uh, maybe I'll simplify it one more time. We have 1 plus a half. So we could write that dA is equal to r squared times 3 halves, because 1 plus a half is 3 halves. Then we have minus 2 times the cosine of t, and plus a half times this. So plus 1 half times the cosine of 2t times dt. Now I think we're ready to plug that into our integral. And let's go ahead and do that here. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi. The r squared can come out, so we'll put that in front, r squared times 3 over 2 minus 2 times the cosine of t, and then plus 1 half times the cosine of 2t times dt. Now, we need to make one little adjustment because if we're going to integrate this portion of the integral, we have a cosine of 2t, which means we need a 2dt. So we need to multiply this times 2 and also divide by 2. So 1 half times 2 is 1, so we negate it that way. But at least in this case, when we integrate this, we have the cosine of 2t times 2dt. So this is used for the differential. Now we're ready to integrate. So this becomes equal to r squared times 3 over 2 times t, because it's in terms of dt here. Then here, the integral of cosine would be the sine, because the, the derivative of the sine is the cosine, so the integral of cosine is the sine, so we still have a minus 2 times the sine of t, and then here, plus 1 quarter, the cosine of 2t. When we integrate the cosine, we get the positive sine, so we get the sine of 2t, the 2dt drops off, and the limits of integration from 0 to 2 pi. Okay. Now we're ready to plug in the limits. Notice we have the sine here, we have the sine here. The sine of 0 is 0, and the sine of 2 pi is 0. Same with the sine of 2t. Again, we get 0. Does these two terms drop out? We only have this term left over, so this becomes equal to 3 over 2 
r squared times, plug in the upper limit, 2 pi into t gives us 2 pi minus plug in the lower limit, we get 0. So this 2 cancels out with this 2, and we get this is equal to 3 pi r squared. And this would be the area of a single arch of the cycloid. Now to get a feel if we got this somewhat correct, we can do an approximation. What if we go ahead and imagine this to be a rectangle? The rectangle would have height equal to twice the radius, and the length of the rectangle here would be 2 pi r. So the area of the rectangle would be equal to the product of 2 pi times 2 pi r, Oop, not 2 pi but 2 r, so let's replace that by an r. So this would be equal to 4 pi r squared. That would be the area of the complete rectangle. And the area of the arch, we calculated to be 3 pi r squared, which is 3 quarters the area of the rectangle. When you eyeball it, that looks pretty close, so we're fairly confident that this is either the exact correct answer or something pretty close to it. I got the suspicion it's correct. Anyway, that's how we find the area of the arch of a cycloid.